Um, well, I'm delighted to be joined by Laura Farris now. She's the safeguarding minister based in the Home Office and the Ministry of Justice. Nice to see you this morning, Minister. Thank you for sparing the time on a Sunday morning. Can we talk about these migration figures? Are the Tory party now the, Tor the party of mass migration? No, Camilla. I, I, I accept without reservation that the figures last week were too high. Um, but the government is now... First of all, some of the reason for that was because of things like the Ukraine scheme that we've run and also the, the offer to BNO passport holders, that's British passport holders in Hong Kong following the Chinese crackdown. Yeah. So there have been one or two one-off events that have led to very, very large numbers, more than 100,000 people coming in on visas, that, humanitarian visas that reflect our values and were the right thing to do. I think many would agree. Yes. But it's also true, when you look at the principal sort of worker categories, there were large numbers of students and large numbers coming in to fill vacancies in the health and care sector, also bringing in large numbers of dependents. Now, we've already addressed that in relation to students and the ONS forecast that that will bring numbers down considerably. Yeah. But it's quite obvious that there's further to go on that, particularly the issue of dependents. And I would also just, just gently flag, and you'll have heard this yourself in the autumn statement, there was a huge thrust towards getting people who are currently on incapacity benefits back into some oh, yes. form of no, I know. filling the vacancies in the labour market as a way of offsetting and trying I know. to reduce the numbers coming in. I completely take the point you're making about Hong Kong and indeed Ukraine and indeed the student visa changes. But at the same time, we have historically heard from successive Tory administrations a desire to get immigration down to the tens of thousands. It's been above 200 or 300,000 literally since David Cameron has been in power. So unfortunately, our audience feels betrayed by your promises. You talked in the 2019 Tory manifesto about having this Australian points-based system to control immigration. The perception is with these numbers and indeed with the tens of thousands still arriving in the channel by boat, that migration, legal and illegal, is completely out of control under your watch. You must accept that, otherwise you are taking our audience for fools. I wouldn't dream of taking your audience for fools, actually. Um, and I, I, I accept without reservation that the numbers are too high. It is really important to look into the component parts of that rather than just presenting it as one single issue. There is definitely an issue with the numbers coming over and the numbers of dependents that they're bringing. And it is absolutely right that the measures that we are announcing or co that are coming forward will look at that and will be directed at bringing overall numbers down. Can mm. I just address separately what you were saying about illegal migration? migration across the channel because one of the really important points is that the measures that the Prime Minister put in actually in the weeks after he became uh, Prime Minister, first of all a comprehensive returns agreement um, with Albania and secondly robust new border protections in France, in France. Collectively they have bought the number of small boats crossing the channel this year down by over 30% at the same time as the number of illegal migrants crossing the Mediterranean into continental mm. Europe has gone up by 80%. So that's not just a real terms drop. It's a very significant relative drop. Just as pressure is building in continental Europe, we are driving yeah. numbers down. Now, you know, Camilla, that the next stage of that is going to be the emergency legislation that's brought forward to deal with Rwanda because we only create a complete deterrent across the English Channel if we can say, if you arrive here but at the hands of a people smuggler, yes. illegally, then you will have no right now but, or ever to file them in the United Kingdom, making but, it Minister, completely not worth their while. But there does seem to Sorry. be a row within Cabinet about the Rwanda plan. On one hand, we've got Robert Jenrick pushing this plan. It was Suella Braverman's plan as well, and he worked under her. But on the other hand, we've got James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary, so not, or was the Foreign Secretary, now the Home Secretary, so not an insignificant role that he's playing on all this. He's previously described the plan in quite unsavoury terms. He doesn't seem to be a supporter of it. And he said that Rwanda isn't the be-all and end-all, reportedly. So you've now got a Home Secretary seemingly at odds with his own Immigration Minister about the government's flagship policy to stop the boats. 
No, I, I, I want to be clear. In the interview which you're referring to, I think it was yesterday's interview, he described, the Home Secretary described Rwanda as a really important part of our plan. I think the point that he was making is it isn't just Rwanda that's mm. enabled us to get the numbers down significantly, but I want to make absolutely clear that we see Rwanda yeah. as a very, very important element of our next strategy, which is you, you create a complete deterrent by removing the incentive to take those routes. No, we understand you... the plan. It's just this its this idea of there being tensions in the Home Office at a time when this policy is absolutely integral, not just to stopping the boats, but seemingly the government's chances of being re-elected. I know what you're saying about James Covey, but at the end of the day, he has been widely quoted, and it hasn't been disputed, that he thought this plan was bat something crazy. That's well, not look, an endorsement say... of the plan, is it? There is nothing that I have detected that suggests any schism in the Home Office. I've only been I've only been in post for two weeks, but I've been to a couple of meetings related to this, and I have detected complete cohesion on where we're going next. One of the things about the Supreme Court's decision on, on Rwanda was that it was a focused criticism. It was completely centred on the issue of reform on, which is yes. language adopted from the Refugee Convention, which means that Rwanda has placed people at risk historically of being returned to their country of origin before their okay. asylum claim has been Minister. determined. So Minister, yes. we're running out of time, so a quick yes-no answer to the following question, please. Will flights to Rwanda take off next year, yes or no? Yes. OK, thank you very much indeed for that, Laura Farris. Thank, thank you for you. joining me this morning.